Hello guys, and welcome to the first episode of the Bookworm Podcast. Um, today we have two fantastic novels that we will be exploring and comparing. Um, first we have The Road by Cormac McCarthy, and we also have A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. Uh, we're Declan and Rocco, and we hope you enjoy this podcast. Uh, we're going to kind of talk about reactions, and we're also going to explore morality in the books. Uh, and before we get started, oh, sorry, and before we get started, we'd like to give a huge thank you to our sponsor, Bookworm Books. Use code Bookworm, that's code Bookworm with a capital B, for 20% off in their online store. All right. Yeah. Uh, first, we're going to start with our reactions to these novels. So I'll uh, hand it off to you, Rocco. Uh, okay, so I'll start with, see, so yeah, I read The Road. And I think that the writing style was really interesting and, like, different because there's, like, no punctuation in the book, which is, like, something you don't really see. And, like, it took me a little bit to get used to, but I actually kind of think it was enjoying it. I enjoyed it. It was refreshing. And, yeah. Uh, what about your... Um, writing style. So for, so for a farewell to arms, uh, actually, sort of a similar uh, thing for me that uh, is that Ernest Hemingway writes a little, a little different, well, against convention for a lot of uh, writers these days, and during his time. So it's got sort of shorter sentences and and uh, lots of them throughout the uh, paragraph, the pages. And honestly, it's, it's kind of a nice little breath of fresh air. It's, it's honestly pretty interesting. It keeps everything short and concise. Um, you don't like it focus. Allow, yeah. Um, it allows it to sort of be beautiful in its simplicity. Right. On to the so plot. What did you think of? Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think the plot was like, it was a good, simple plot. It's just like a man and his son trying to survive in the apocalypse when there's just like so many horrible things around them. Um, so yeah, I think I like the characters, um, I think the son was pretty fascinating on how his relationship with his father kind of changed throughout the book, and how, like, yeah. the father really doesn't want to make the son upset, and, like, the son is kind of his moral compass, and I guess we'll talk about that later, uh, in the morality section. Um, so yeah, the plot was pretty interesting, ending was very sad, you know, um, finished it in class, and then was kind of depressed, but, yeah. Uh, and then, I think that Cormac McCarthy does a great job at, like, describing settings in the book. Like, they're all very, like, kind of, they're all very sad and, like, gray, but he describes them really well, and you, you, he kind of uses imagery well, so, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I would agree. Uh, my, the plot in, uh, Pharaoh the Arms was also... I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really cool sort of exploration of, as it says, exploration of, of love and, and war. And there's both sort of apocalyptic uh, scenarios, one of World War One and one of actual apocalypse. I think really interesting how the story progressed of him you know, trying to make sense of the world in battle and in these, in these horrible situations, seeing people killed, seeing people wounded. Think people emotionally and mentally scarred, um, and then you know finding you know someone to love and how that sort of affects his day to day, keeps him going and gives him you know something to stay alive for. As far as character goes, or characters go, I should say, uh, I thought they were you know pretty well written. I think that the the his 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 lover, or, uh, the main character, Frederick Henry, his lover, Catherine. It's written a little one-dimensionally, maybe, but uh, still, still quite good. And Frederick Henry had a ton of nuances and, and things that were really cool about him. All right. So now, as uh, Rocco said, we're going to go into morality. I spoke to hand it off to him. All right. So, um, the man obviously in this book, he has to make a lot of tough decisions. And, like, he also has to keep his relationship with his son going. And also, he still kind of tries to have good morals. Um, I guess, like, some examples. Uh, you could say uh, when they find 
the people that were kidnapped by cannibals uh, in the cellar. Um, obviously, if we think about it, like, the moral thing to do, right away you'd think, okay, they have to save them. Because um, the cannibals are obviously going to kill them. But um, the father uh, quickly just turns their way and runs with his son. Which you can kind of understand, because obviously the father's whole goal is just to keep his son alive through this apocalypse. And his son is kind of what he lives for. So you can kind of understand why he did that. But it's obviously kind of morally yeah. wrong. Um, but you can also think of it as, like, uh, he didn't know what was out there. And even if he, like, freed them, they'd... Um, You'd have to give them some rations to keep them alive, and that would probably just hurt the whole group together. Yeah, I think I think that's a good uh, good take on that. It's it's interesting, you know, exploring you know self preservation and the, the preservation of those that you know versus potentially saving large group of people, but you may not may not know them. So are they are they less human to you? Or is it worth worth saving or having the sliver of a chance to save everyone or? some to guarantee the survival of the rest you know what is the more moral, moral choice there yeah but and I don't really know the answer to that I think morality is yeah of substance but to say I think that as we have never been in a situation like that having to choose between life of a few and the the, the lives of all or more a few people the group I think it's it's tough for us to, to judge yeah definitely. or or say much because you know we've never been in a situation like that exactly and maybe if the man was like alone you didn't have a son maybe he would have helped them because he would have maybe felt like he didn't have anything to like risk really if it was just him by himself but i think he just didn't really want to put his son in danger yeah i think so too that's you know the the drive of a father to protect son and to you know be it be this sort of father figure being this protector for overall else, so it should be at least. Um, contrasted to my book, uh, in a farewell to arms. Uh, at the end of the book, um, of course, his uh, soon-to-be wife, Catherine, gives birth, and it's it's sort of an interesting thing because. He actually doesn't feel a, a fatherly connection. He sort of just views this this child as an inconvenience. Of course, things right away go south, and you'll never know. Uh, spoiler warning, I will say, but of course, child ends up dying, and so does his wife, or soon to be wife. But before that happens, he doesn't actually feel any fatherly connection. Um, it's interesting there, even though you know the role of a father is supposed to be the protector and supposed to, you know, bond with with child, but he, he doesn't, and he sort of describes it as an inconvenience and something to be to be to be angry at, to be to be scorned. A little bit of an oddity there. Uh, another example, a big one that happens multiple times, parallel arms, is with executions in uh, World War One happens twice, as far as I remember, at least the two biggest examples of it. The first time it happens is actually Friedrich Henry himself uh, execute, or attempting to execute two other soldiers. So it goes, basically, him and his unit, Friedrich Henry's unit, had to escape the retreat because the Germans were pushing them from their position. So with him and a bunch of other Italian soldiers, they try and get out of there. And uh, they're semi-successful. They get a run out of the village at least, but then his car breaks down, gets stuck. Um, so they have to try and figure out how to get it moving, working, and they do get it. Or they first get stuck, and they get it. They get it moving again. They they pick up um, two other soldiers who are by themselves, and also uh, two sort of girls. They get them moving, and they're they're moving forward and. And the car totally breaks down, they're completely stuck. And the two soldiers, they run. They, they leave, they try and escape. Uh, and they're sort of leaving behind the, sort of, the, the girls. They're sort of like innocents in this book. They're, they're supposed to be something that needs to be protected, is sort of pure. And these two soldiers, they run away. And Friedrich Henry, he shoots them, kills one, the other escapes, but he tries to kill the other two. 
And, you know, is that a moral action? Should he have shot the, the, the soldier? It's an interesting thing. I would say no, obviously. I think execution is wrong, yeah. personally. Again, it's a tough thing. Um, yeah, but like we weren't there, obviously, so we can't kind of know. Like, exactly, and these soldiers students. were pretty much abandoning them and dooming him and the two girls and everyone else there to die. Maybe with their help, they could have got the car moving. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, I guess but we'll never know. Like the, uh, guess we'll never know. Yeah. And the other time is with executions is when they are, uh, Frederick Henry is tr trying finally to get back to the Italian line. He got stuck behind uh, enemy lines, of course, because his car broke down. He finally reaches this river and he crosses it, and he finds the Italian military police, and they're shooting uh, all these officers who were not with their units for desertion. And he almost gets shot. He has to escape. There's another, another action there um, where, yes, I don't think that execution is moral, but from the point of view of the military police, they were doing what they had to because these people, the, they thought, were, were cowards. They'd abandoned their men um, and had probably let them die. Um, now obviously, this probably isn't true, but from their point of view, that's what it'd be. You'd find a, an officer without his unit, that means he'd abandoned them. Yeah. So you can kind of see from their perspective, it's still probably not moral even in any situation to do something like that. Uh, back to you, Rocco. Is there any uh, other examples that jump out? Uh, yeah, okay, actually, wait, we're out. I'll do one more example, and I guess we'll just conclude then. Um, right. So later on in the book, um, the two of them, they end up finding, like, a bunker with, like, almost, not endless supply of food, but, like, so much food. Uh, also, like, there's a gun in there, there's some ammo. It's like basically winning the lottery in the apocalypse. And the boy basically asks the father if they're stealing from the people that own this. And the father says that they're dead and they're, they're just letting us take this. And they'd want us to have it. Which you can kind of take it as like two ways because he has no way of knowing if they're um, actually dead or not. Um, so I guess you could be stealing from them. But also, it makes sense why they obviously had to take the supplies, because there was just so much there, and uh, they were starving, and they just had to. And they even when they left, there was still so much left. So theoretically, even if they were alive, they still have, like, a very good supply of food there. Hmm. Also interesting, you know, maybe they were justified in doing it, because I mean, was it wasn't moral for whoever owned the bunker to hide all of this food and supplies from everyone else and hoard it for themselves. Exactly, because so, so many people uh, are like star so many people are starving, like in the wilderness. And like yeah. they could just like drop some stuff on the road because a lot of people would take that road. At least we've seen a couple, so they could like just do a nice thing, but not many people are nice in the apocalypse, uh, you can see, so yeah. Yeah, and final thought if you guys with as we're you know, approaching our time here. Uh, is, you know, does morality really matter in the end? If you're exactly. not in a, a functioning society, what's more important, you know, survival or morality? Oftentimes it's going to come to that question. And, uh, yeah. All right, so we are nearing the end of our uh, time here. So uh, to conclude here, Rise, we examine morality and our reactions to the road by Cormac McCarthy and a farewell to arms by Ernest Hemingway. Hope you enjoyed. And a fantastic day. Before you go, we want to thank the amazing people over at Bookworm Books for setting up this sponsorship, allowing us to create the content you enjoy. Don't forget to use code Bookworm, that's Bookworm with a capital B, at checkout for an additional 20% off. Alright, thank you for listening. Goodbye.